Hello, my name is Eric Ellers and I'm a research associate at the Allen Institute. Today I'm going to show you how to thaw human-induced pluripotent stem cells in one mil Grainer Bio One Cryo S vials. Before we begin, please take a moment to check and see which vial you have. If you have the Grainer Bio One Cryo S vial, then this video is for you. If not, please see our previously published video on how to thaw cells from our older vials. Take a moment to familiarize yourself with the vial, noting the 2D barcode on bottom and the cell line information printed on the tube. Both of these are key for traceability. Before we begin, let's make sure that we have all the necessary items to thaw our cells. First, we'll need a 10 centimeter matrigel coated dish um, for, to plate our cells after we have thawed them. We'll need M-teaser plus rock inhibitor. Um, and we'll need a conical filled with five mils of M-teaser and rock inhibitor uh, to aliqua our cells into once the vial has thawed. It's very important to do this in a clean biosafety cabinet, um, always remembering aseptic technique. Remember that these vials must be stored in a vapor phase doer and not a liquid doer for long-term storage. And before we go into the vapor phase doer to grab our vials, we must make sure that we have the proper safety equipment. That includes cryo gloves, a face shield. Um, in addition to that, we also will need a bucket of dry ice to contain our cells as we transfer them to the lab. So now I'm going to go in and grab our vials. Now that we've moved our vial from the vapor phase doer into dry ice, we can move these cells into the lab to begin thawing. So now that we're back in the lab, we can begin thawing our cells. To do that, we'll need a rack to hold our cells while they sit in our incubator. Remove the cells from the dry ice and place into a rack like this. After that, move the cells into a 37 degree Celsius incubator for about three to eight minutes. Make sure to set a timer for your cells so you don't forget, and we'll want to check these cells every couple of minutes to make sure that they're thawing at a pace that's acceptable for our uses. Let's spray down our hands and gloves with ethanol before we reach into our incubator to grab our cells. Then take a Kim wipe and spray it with ethanol and clean the rack and the cells before you move them into the incubator. Now that we've moved our cells and rack into the biosafety cabinet, uh, Gently unscrew the cap, making sure to not make contact with the inside of the vial to make sure everything stays sterile. Once the cap has been removed, use a one mil aspirating pipette to aspirate in the entire volume of the vial and transfer it to our preloaded 15 mil conical. When you're transferring the volume, make sure not to create any bubbles and move the cells gently. Once the entire volume has been transferred, we will centrifuge our cells to bring all of the cells down to the bottom of the tube. Our next step is to centrifuge our cells at 1000 RPM for three minutes at room temperature. This step will help concentrate our cells at the bottom of the tube before we move them to our recovery plate. Now that our cells have been concentrated at the bottom of the tube, take a quick check to make sure you see a pellet at the bottom of the cells confirming that they are in fact there. Once you've done that, prepare your recovery dish by aspirating off your matrix gel from the dish. Once you have completely aspirated the matrix gel off of the 10 centimeter dish, add seven mils of prepared uh, M-teaser plus rock inhibitor media to the recovery plate. Now that we've prepared our recovery plate, let's return back to our conical with our cells. Let's gently aspirate all of the supernatant off of the cells, being extra careful to not disturb the pellet at the bottom. Once we have aspirated off the supernatant, we will now resuspend our cell pellet in five mils of M-teaser plus rock, in here, rock inhibitor media. Okay. 
After adding the five mils of rock inhibitor media to your cell pellet, gently resuspend the cells by triturating up and down three times, trying to avoid bubbles if possible. After resuspending your cells in your five mils of fresh m -teaser plus rock inhibitor media, transfer the entire volume to your prepared recovery plate. At this step, it's very important to make sure that you are evenly distributing the five mils across the entire 10 centimeter dish. This is to ensure that the cells are equally distributed across the plate. Once you have aliquoted the entire volume of your cell suspension to your recovery dish, gently move the plate back and forth and side to side three times to make sure that the cells are evenly distributed. Once you've done that, place the cells in a 37 degree C incubator um, and allow them to grow for 24 hours before replacing the media with m -teaser without rock inhibitor. Once you've placed your cells in the incubator, gently move them back and forth and side to side to ensure equal distribution across the plate. Great. Now we've thawed our cells, and so the next step is to monitor their growth over the next couple of days. Generally, we advise that individuals who purchase our cells take images 24, 72, and 96 hours after thaw and compare those images to the images in our certificate of analysis. This step is important to make sure that the cells are growing as they should. And that wraps up our cell thawing video today. Thanks for joining me. And if you want to see more detailed information, we have a full written SOP available at allencell.org. Until next time, take care.